Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. Everybody on the floor now! My, what a lovely tattoo you have. I always love the wolf. So say your prayers. No one was supposed to die. I got the devil in the devil in me. Friends, uh, get away over in Echo Park. There you go. Looks nice. I just yeah, left yeah, LA really three did. weeks ago, so I'm kind of missing the everyday sunshine and, you know, nice weather. Oh, of course. Where are you? Uh, I'm in Chicago. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. I've been there very briefly, but I love the architecture. Oh, it's, it's something to be seen, man. If you ever come back, architectural tour on the boat, that's the thing to do. Oh, on the boat? You mean yep. in the yeah. Great Lake? It, well, yeah, it goes through like Lake Michigan, kind of around the city, um, and and it takes you on all the architectural like hot spots. It's really cool. Oh, amazing! Yeah, yeah, that will absolutely be on the very number one of my list. There you go. <laughs> Ever needed recommendations, Chicago? Let me know. You know. Oh, for sure. Thank you. So, how are you doing? How's everything? I mean, you, you're not chasing from you know, you're not hiding any murders or anything in real life, so that's at least good. I, mean, I found the spot good... though, if I ever did need to. <laughs> well, yeah. there you go. It's pretty. It looks like a forest that you know kind of reminds me of something that'd probably be an unsolved mysteries or whatnot. So. Yeah. No, there's just a little Japanese house like right over there. Oh, really? Those are cool. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Where are we? We got a good spot. Oh, I see yeah. it through the fence. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's over there. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And it's nice yeah. to like hidden around trees. That's an awesome spot. Yeah, it's wonderful. Just uh, having a little day retreat. Well, there you go. You know what? It's it's a good thing to to be able to do that. How's everything with quarantine? You're you're okay? Staying safe? Everything? Thank you very home? much. Yeah, everything is uh, is good. Uh, I want to have my parents out here, but I know like traveling sometimes is not really the best time to do anything like that. But where are they at? Uh, they live in New York City, where I'm from. I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy that now, like, California, LA has become a hotspot, you know, when New York was originally that, and Chicago, it's just, everything flipped over upside down. Exactly. I was there at first, in fact, uh, until everything mellowed out, and then I came here when everything peaked back up, so I'm just you're chasing just the next the, step. You're just following the hotspots in that sense, and yeah. unfortunately. I think Mississippi is going to be next. It has to be. <laughs> right in the middle, right? All right. You just have to do some work there. Yeah. It can happen on the river where no one's around there, you know? Yeah, that would be nice. Exactly. Consolidate it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm... Has it been a good... Pardon? I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that you took the time to talk to me. Uh, really oh, cool. George. I, I, listen, I... I wasn't even aware that CBS All Access had the two seasons on it. I just kind of started following through CW. I saw the previews. I'm like, okay, I'm going to just roll with it the old school way. Week to week, you know, like watching television like it used to be consumed without binging it, you know. And then oh, I got yeah. CBS All Access, I'm like, wait, there's two seasons available right now. But I'm sticking with the weekly thing. I'm going to roll with the CW. I'm going to watch it week by week and build the anticipation for the show. Ah, perfect. Yeah, it's such a different experience, right? It almost becomes a little bit more theatrical and you're like waiting and it's a really cool. I like doing the once a week as well. I like it because binging, it's easy, but then you kind of take it all in. But every week having that anticipation, it's really cool. Kind of like it makes you forget the kind of the old days of how you would wait for your favorite shows with the cliffhangers, you know, and then you wait for the next week what happens. It's like every Tuesday night now I have something to like look forward to in that way, which is cool. I'm going to be looking away from spoilers anything like that and just be indulging it in real time so i'll be i'll be careful what i say you're up to number three <laughs> i mean number two then you just watch number two on yep. tuesday i watch number cool. two tell me how you got man i kevin williamson is like when you grew up i'm i'm 34 like i grew up on dawson's creek you know then it was oh like, sure i mean it screamed that was all like kind of my childhood and teenage years growing up i mean that man yeah. was just like someone that created great television and film tell me kind of your experience with uh, with you know kevin williams's shows and now kind of getting to work on a show of his that's that's a pretty cool pinch me moment i'd imagine no it is absolutely kevin williamson is absolutely iconic in our horror sculpt uh, culture and beyond yep. that at this point it's transcended right because everyone recognizes like mm. you know the scream and uh i mean without the hands right but everyone recognizes <laughs> the scream and i was I remember when it came out, I was just a little bit too young. And so there was 
um, I had seen the guy, like the, the mass scream with like the knife. And then uh, I remember, I know what you did last summer came out. I That's remember right. the, the box covers uh, in the VHS video shop. And it would always scare me. And then I remember finally watching, I know what you did last summer. And then feeling like, God, like that was such a, a trip, you know, it was so scary. And um, the big kids were at that point, they all looked like, you know, they were adults, even though they were like teenagers and uh-huh. were like in their early twenties. But, uh, that movie really kind of set the standard and introduction to the horror genre for me. And I didn't know until a long time afterwards, the same way, I guess you don't find out that Coke and Sprite are made by the same person. Like <laughs> uh, Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer are both by him, you know? Mm-hmm. And there are there are certain excellent overlaps. But I, I felt like those, the fact that in I Know What You Did Last Summer, she these kids run over this guy by accident and now they're forced with having to reckon with the consequences uh, became this motif, this really scary motif of how uh, your ghosts catch up with you and how that sometimes when you slip and you make this harmless mistake that ended up being fatal, uh, it will be the hardest and worst thing that you'll ever go through. And now that you have to, you know, he comes after you. So Mm -hmm. fast forward to a, a tell me a story. I kind of felt like it was this, awesome echo of sort of that idea that um, I watched when I was a kid and now it's kind of like bubbled up and manifested around me with this plot and with Kevin. So it's an honor. It's an honor to be part of that ride, part of that narrative. You know, uh, an artist has usually one voice that he evolves over time as he's uh, drawing and, and and shaping sort of his story his universe so to be part of that narrative that i started when i was a kid and i remember when dawson's creek was on and all mm-hmm. i can't even believe that it's him because you know it, he's able to really be versatile in that regard uh, yeah it's it's an honor it's really cool it's a lot of fun you know the cool thing about this show is that immediately struck me was how current it is like it feels like you're watching real time you know especially with what the politics of it and, and there's definitely some real life messages that are being sent through to characters and the show, but I was just taken away how current that it is. It felt like it's literally almost happening in real time. You know, the characters are dealing because you, when you watch sometimes shows or movies, it's like, it's a, you know, it's a real world, but it's fictional, you know, but this feels as a viewer that you're kind of inside real happenings that these could literally characters going through things that you are going through as a person in your everyday life. Um, did that kind of strike you too, how current this show is in the messages and how, how real time it feels? So anticipatory, uh, especially now, because when it came out on CBS All Access, of course, there's already this sentiment uh, with the police that was in the air, but nothing that has been flooding headlines as far as I can remember. Mm-hmm. And the spirit of protest, uh, after after the current sitting president had um, come in, it was in the air as well and all this uncertainty and a lot of chaos in the world. And so that becomes part of the scary aspect. It's the psychological horror that we do interact with day to day in our lives, the larger scope, you know? Yep. So fast forward, you know, and then afterwards um, we see the protests outside and BLM actually happens and it's, uh, it, it was that was when it got really kind of amazing because it, it almost foresaw that you know a good yeah year and a half before totally so, like it yeah like it was now that. watching and when you're watching for a first run on cw it feels like was this film like a week ago you know or exactly or it's so crazy exactly. in that sense but that's that's me that's kevin williamson doing his magic in a lot of ways you know and maybe his foreshadowing or just his pulse on culture and, and you know kind of the the livelihood around us. And that's what I felt like he always had a great job he's done in his films and, and shows and just kind of using a maybe fictionalized characters or kind of a supernatural world, but really kind of bringing it into reality in a lot of ways, you know, and, and this show in so many ways, these stories are possible, you know, it's not mm-hmm. completely fictionalized in so many ways. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, your story is the Hansel and Gretel, possibly. I mean, that's where it's leaning Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Um, 
the cool thing for me was, you know, when I saw you in the first scene, it was with Luke Gould on, and Luke was one of my first interviews I've ever done. Uh, when no I started way. Doing this. Yes. And cool. he was just kind of, um, I think, auditioning for the good times. Like, he was just kind of making his mark and setting up. So I remember Luke vividly. He was kind of beginning his career, and I was beginning my career, and he was one of my first interviews, and it was so cool now to see him. Uh, and I actually ran into him last summer in L.A., which was really cool. We had that chat. But seeing him on a show with you, it was just such a cool, like, a pinch me moment. Kind of took me mm. back personally um, mm -hmm. in, in a lot of ways. Um, Tell me, working with Luke and Danya, uh, it, it's so cool uh, having these kind of, you know, real good actors, I mean, be surrounded with and, and to be working these scenes with and, and this story. Um, tell me what, what that experience been like for you. Uh, I, Danya was immediately a big sister. Mm -hmm. uh, before the show began, um, setting up during the show throughout, even now, afterwards, uh, she is a marvel to behold like the way she works is so immediately committed and uh and visceral so i admire her and i love working with her everything feels so immersive and she's so giving and focused and like i feel her so much so it was a blessing working with Tanya, luke it was so cool to it's always great when you're tag teaming with someone you know and it's like mm -hmm. oh, you're my partner in crime and uh and like in it we jump in right away and we see like these kids have been rolling around for a long time and um playing you know their roommates the whole thing and like when you're just like really cool like luke you're able to jump in and like oh, okay immediately you feel like oh we've known each other for a long time you know so i it's just really lucky i guess to have people that you are immediately connected to uh i love i <laughs> Anna, I, I love Tanya and, and Luke was just a lot of fun. And so it just felt like very natural to, to explore those relationships on screen with them. You know, one thing I always appreciate about CW shows, I mean, they've obviously always kind of geared to a certain demographic of teenagers and young adults, but they've always kind of, even back in the day, they've always pushed boundaries when it comes to sexuality, when it comes to, you know, LGBT, race. I always felt like the CW shows, it really highlighted and acknowledged that in a lot of their shows. And this one too, it's very diverse with the cast and the theme and topics. Uh, what is it kind of like for you to, to play, to be in that world and, and play these, the, a character that is diverse in so many ways and kind of mm. you know realistic to the, to the world we live in now you know and things mm -hmm. we used to and other shows we would not get to see or you know kind of was hidden on the side and wasn't embraced and and I think this show and, and a lot of CW shows have embraced that and, and kind of mm. that whole aspect of, of diversity it's critical you know it's critical to be able to play uh, real diverse voices on screen uh, because when you don't do that you, we're basically pretending like a whole group like a group of people don't exist right. and when you're able to play someone that checks many boxes if i would like if we're gonna categorize people in boxes but that the, the important value of that is that you kind of feel like you're able to be reflective and to to be relevant and be daring and to tell truer stories, you know, then it's not just about the ride, the roller coaster that the story is, which mm -hmm. of course it's a lot of fun, but it's also, and you, you mentioned a phrase that completely touches me, which is the, that in, insidious suspicion that all this could be real, you know? And so you're seeing all these walks of life and you, and the purpose of the story too, in the, beginning episode how everyone is we're all on these paths through the woods but sometimes we crisscross and the only way to really sow this this uh authentic appearance of what life is like is by having all these people from different walks and how we relate to each other so that's part of the craft of the story and and uh by doing that we're able to also feel a little bit more connected to the real world and say hey this is why it's scary it's because it's about all of us living right now under these circumstances Yep. And there's always someone watching who can relate in some way. You know, that's the power mm -hmm. of it too, being on a show that mm -hmm. you get an audience and there's always someone kind of going through either a teenager or young adult kind of going through a, a big aspect of their life that can maybe take away something from these characters and 
feel more included. You know, that's, mm. I think, the power of being uh, in television, film, especially on shows like this that impact young adults in a lot of ways and people kind of going through crossroads in their lives. So I always think that's, in a sense, a little bit of a responsibility too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It honors a responsibility, you know, for representation on television and, and narratives on screen that, uh, that the mass can, can watch that is available and accessible to such a large group of people. Mm -hmm. So it's great. It's great to be part of that. Did you, did you find yourself just jumping through the script whenever you got the script uh, to see what's happening to the, your character and the other storylines? Like, how, how addictive was that? Or you kind of wait week in, week out to kind of see, do you binge the script or do you kind of wait uh, as a week goes by to see what you're up to next, kind of? Yeah, Jim, like it, was, it was evolving uh, one at a time, you know? Yeah. So when that script came out, I would rush home. It was really cool. Talk about treating the show like a uh, like this original, you know, reservation television of you know mm -hmm. I'm gonna be there at that time. I want to see it at, when it comes out, and looking forward to it. The anticipation. So as a viewer, it was the same experience I was having as a reader of it. Okay, we're it's coming out today, and I would rush home and read it, and I wouldn't just fly through it because it's a whole thing is a trip. You know, I would be like gapping at the the Kayla storyline and how that was evolving out of a sudden wondering who the real wolf was and uh the three little pigs and in all of it was such a trip for me and and um, exciting it was exciting to see and then seeing okay uh, so I would have these ideas of all right so Hannah and Gabe they're gonna get out of this money situation and then we're gonna what's gonna happen in New York all of a sudden we're getting at oh I don't wanna I don't wanna spoil it for you but then it <laughs> things shift and turn and meander unexpectedly so it's uh it's actually really cool I suppose, shared experience that I have with the audience. Because in a way, that was totally me uh, being at, flying by the seat of my pants, learning what was going to happen. That's cool. Yeah, you know, your storyline is especially kind of... Uh personal to me because like I have an older sister and I feel like she would act the same way as you and I in a sense if I screw up you know she'd like yeah. bitch me out but then she would have my back you know yeah. ultimately yes. and, and try to get me out of a situation so that's very real to, to form in a sense in that way you know how an older sibling's got your back you know yeah and even yeah. through you screw up and go through these things you know and kind of navigate out of your troubles you know, what kind of, I'm curious, what kind of, because you've done, I wanted to ask you about Power Rangers. That's, that's a cool part. That's like iconic franchise in itself. Uh, you know, growing up, me, you know, watching it, running from school and seeing it. But what is kind of being part of like a new generation of that? I mean, that, that show's gone on for a long time and there's been so many literally kids that have grown up at different points of it. You know, is there also like a sort of responsibility or cool kind of like, moment for you every time you work on it to, to reflect that you're part of something that's been part of so many childhoods of an iconic franchise? Yeah, yeah. I guess there's definitely the through line between um, both projects. It's that idea that it's been around, um, or like Kevin's world and universes has been around mm -hmm. in our lives and short, um, and that show has as well. I definitely grew up, um, I, I mean, I had a whole childhood moment with a uh, moment that like has lasted with, uh, with Rangers. And as I said, Kevin's world colored um, my late boyhood into teens um, when I was when I was first geared up enough to actually expose myself to the horror, to the trip that his work is. Um, yeah, it was. It's always kind of surreal to reflect. You know, it's surreal to reflect yeah. on something that you kind of just watched in your living room and and you took it just as like that was that world. This is my world. But now it's letting it wash over me and. Uh, being part of my life you know so then for it to now be part of my life but um, seeing whether it's like the suits you know uh, like the just seeing the guys in like you know the full helmets and everything it's like, yep. ah, wow like this is <laughs> this is real you know or or like shooting a scene where r discovering someone covered in blood in a, in a bath uh, in a bathtub or not that that will ever happen under any circumstances <laughs> in a story like ours but it is uh yeah, it's it's always kind of trippy to look back. I mean, you try to stay focused, but it's yeah, cool. it's like your childhood, then navigating to Kevin Williamson's like teenage. You know, it's like you you you're reliving your childhood into transition into teenage uh, years. You know, and yeah, it's very cool. Ready Player One in that way. Yep. Like, the simulation, you know. Have you seen that Steven Spielberg's yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready yep. Player One? Yeah, it's yep. kind of you I'm know sure. like how you're in his memory and then it's being projected out and you're kind of experiencing the circumstances. Uh, yeah, it's it's cool. 
sometimes it gets even a little bit more like butterfly and weird and like a fun scary it becomes just more of a ride just because like what's what's real you know and what does this mean yep. so and it's, it's, it's yeah and it's like i feel like we live in a, in a sense like nostalgia has never been as as popular as it has now like what's old is new now again in so many ways mm. you know, people are craving like reboots of, of you know of movies that we've seen as kids you know like we have ninja Strange turtles movies. things was a celebration yeah. of of that whole period Totally. I, I think that's like people who either grew up on it and now are adults during those times. Right. The ones that are kind of telling their kids now that haven't experiences are curious about it. And I feel like that's now we're kind of going back to, to some of the good old days in, in, in a way, you know, what we grew up in, what, what was kind of meaningful to us. And we're passing it down to a new generation that's kind of curious about it too, you know, mm -hmm. um, in so many ways. I think that's really cool that uh, some of these things are obviously still alive and and now more celebrated more than ever you know and yeah yeah it's a cool thing uh, it's following the same trail the bed the breadcrumbs and seeing where it takes us yep. it's the same voice you know telling uh the same sort of ep the epic tale it's like one and then it just kind of reincarnates and changes and we get to follow it and reflect back at what it used to look like and where are we in our lives now as we as we take in the story uh at where it's at where we are and then i see i guess we're wondering where are we going to go from here right um, but it's, it's kind of cool to see that it's also there with us you know yep. it, it's it doesn't fade away or disappear you know mm -hmm. it's like a time capsule that we can open and you know yeah and just, yeah. yeah yeah and and then we reflect on our own lives as a result because yep. we we remember what we were like and what we saw and what we believed when we saw it then and now it's here again to do it for us now uh, totally. Yeah, it's remarkable. It's a remarkable yeah. effect uh, that kind of colors on screen and then off as well. Yeah, and even the, like the fairy tales of this movie, I'm like, damn, I forgot what like Hansel and Greta were like, even though the movie just came out too, ironically, recently, you know, but mm. like, but it kind of makes me want to think of like, oh, what did I, what were the three little pigs? What was it about? You kind of remember it, but you don't now. Like I'm trying to watch the show and piece together the old fairy tales and kind of remember them or at least Google them. Like, oh, what was the story of that? So it's a kind of cool, even deeper dive into the past, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. In which I like that this show kind of brings forth and mixes it perfectly w with the current situation. So that's, uh, that's so cool, you know, in, in so many ways. And I want to, you know, I always like to ask whoever I kind of interview, like, what are some things they like to do, like hobbies or interests in real life? Like, I always get some good stuff from directors and actors, because obviously you have your world on set, but then you, you got to... I always felt, even though I, I acted myself, but I always felt to be a good actor, you need to have a rich, regular person life. You know, yeah. you just can't be in actor mode all the time. Like you need to have real experiences, real life things to build on, to, to use for your work, you know, but um, to make it richer. And that's how you evolve as a person character. But what are some things you like to enjoy, uh, like in your everyday life to, to kind of get away? Any hobbies or interests that you have? Seize the day is one of my favorite mottos, you uh -huh. know, and it's just, I feel like I'm uh, internally competing with myself to always try to live a richer life and pre-pandemic that had a lot to do with uh, traveling and seeing new worlds and learning about uh, people and what our larger obstacles are and uh, I enjoy diplomacy and political science in that regard going to a place and learning about history it's fascinating um, I dig up old pictures of even my neighborhood in New York and it, or like the art deco in the 30s period in LA and it's so stimulating and returning to nature is is always like this incredible kind of like breath of um air yeah, and a feeling. getaway where you can like actually clear your mind like a legitimate clear your mind yeah, and ground yeah. yourself at being yep. human again so practicing um meditation and, and building an inner life that is healthy and sound and grounded it is so important uh and then also pre and post covid uh mm -hmm. just diving into culture you know um it's so cool to live in to grow up in new york and to live in la and they both have an incredible cultural output so there's so much rich art to see and films and plays and music and then being surrounded by great people that you can learn from and that inspire you so every day is about personal growth and and 
learning something new and seeing something new mm-hmm. and then getting to to perform is then just like a grace so it's 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 good and yeah, no. helicopters are here. They found us. <laughs> uh oh, this is true. <laughs> now you got to hide the money and all that. So you know, yeah. uh, I'm not gonna keep you up. But it, like, here's the thing: once once everything gets back to normal, I, I grew up kind of in uh, in Poland in Eastern Europe, and that's a part of the world that's really cool to see. So if you're into like culture and like kind of the hidden gems, you know, that don't get that explored by Europe, Eastern Europe is an awesome place to visit. Oh my gosh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I went on this uh, diplomacy trip to. Um, it was an Eastern European tour. So we went through Georgia and Tbilisi and oh, wow. um, we ended up in Turkey, Bulgaria for a while. And oh, it was just outrageous. I couldn't believe how just beautiful and overlapping of culture because Western Europe has, of course, all of the neo-Renaissance and, and kind of the More modern of paper. Too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and then Eastern Europe and you start to have that that uh i mean like the soviet union influence and like architecture from the 60s that was very a different philosophy yeah and there's yeah, castles and in hungary you go to like uh, hungary and stuff there's like actual castles you know still there mm. it, to visit and and all that so it's cool you know and, and it's cool to hear that you kind of like you have this curiosity about life and, and history and insatiable oh yeah it's cool. Yeah. There's so much to do and see, you know, and people just sometimes don't take advantage of what we have, you know, out there. Uh, yeah. And, and the stories are, are everywhere. You know, yeah. when you're seeing like when you're walking down a street that you learn is 800 years old and the, you see the cobblestone and you imagine uh, and you see how narrow it is and you say, oh, it's narrow like this because that's horse drawn carriages were taken through here. Then you see the slanted buildings that are from so long ago and symbols used to mean different ideas about how the way they thought the world worked and smells and foods it's just there's so much to to live for and to to try you know and it's always just these epic stories you know so yeah it's, it's rich i hope and i it'd be nice um we all need to take ourselves sometimes out of our delicious comfort zones of home when we yeah. can when it's safe <laughs> and uh yeah just experience the world because it's it's ways of experiencing yourself too yeah, you grow that way. No question. The more you see, the more you experience, the more you know about others, the more you, you develop a sensibility about who you are and, you know, what's out there, you know, and that's mm-hmm. all important for growth. Listen, mm-hmm. I totally appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> Helicopters might be looking for you. So, <laughs> you know, we'll, I'm literally in the woods right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love show. that you're in the woods, Davi. Like, yeah. it's, so cool. <laughs> so, it's so, you know, your character. I swear, it all came from just being practical and not not waking up my, my friends. And then, like, here we are. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. But, by the way, just ignore the bag of money in the back. I swear. Yeah, yeah. We're, we didn't see I mean, it's just the prop. It's just the prop. <laughs> well, listen, uh, continued success. I hope we, I hope to see you more in other shows and films. I, I really enjoy you as an actor so far. I'm just looking forward to seeing more of the story and the show and how things evolve. It's captured my attention for sure. And I think it's cool that, you know, you're playing characters that, that are so deep and rich and, and have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like you said, um, some say, you know, and, and mm. things are. So uh, really appreciate you taking the time. Hope we reconnect again soon. I, I oh, likewise, Jim. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for taking the time.